Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. As is my year-end tradition, I want to share my money goals for the new year and also reflect on how my 2023 money goals have turned out. If you're still thinking about what goals you would like to achieve for the new year, I hope this video gives you some inspiration and I wish you all the best. If you would like to, please share your goals in the comments below because I would love to read them. I am making a companion video to this where I share my budget for 2024 and show how I'm integrating my goals into my monthly budget. That's going to be very useful as well, so please stay tuned and subscribe to my channel so you can watch the video when it's published. I will start by looking back on what goals I had set for 2023 and from there I'll see if there are any changes or adjustments that I'd like to make for my goals for 2024. Let's start with the first one, which is my emergency fund goal of $30,000. I talked about this in my net worth video this year. My family finally received the last of my late father's CPF money that was locked in with public trustee's office after his passing. So with the money that we received, I topped up about 9k to reach my emergency fund goal. So I did achieve this goal, but without as much effort as the other goals because I knew the money was going to come in this year, it was just a matter of when. Some people might think that $30,000 in emergency funds is a bit overkill and perhaps it is but it's a number that I feel the most secure with because I am also saving for my mother and brother in case something were to happen to them. Among the three of us, I am the only one with a full-time job that can support the family and 30 k is roughly 12 months of my monthly expenses. That's how I came to this 30 k number that makes me feel the most stable in terms of my safety net of funds. With that, I'm quite settled with this goal. I might continue to make ad hoc top-ups to my emergency fund throughout the year, but I won't be focusing on building it to be more than 30 k for now. My next three goals are pretty straightforward because the goals were to make monthly top-ups to these accounts. I've budgeted these contributions into my monthly budget throughout the year, and thankfully there was never a month where I had to miss a contribution, since my income was stable the entire year. If you're interested in my monthly budget, I post them every month on my Substack, which I'll link below, I also have a Telegram channel where I share the link to my Substack post every month when I publish it. If you find it helpful to get a nudge every month to remind you to think about your budget, I highly recommend following my Telegram channel or subscribing to my Substack. Anyway, for my retirement investments, the various funds and portfolios that I invested in varied throughout the year as I was experimenting with different things, so I don't really have a set strategy for my retirement investments that I feel confident sharing yet. This is actually related to one of my goals for the new year that I'll talk about later, so keep watching to hear about that. But in terms of amount invested, I successfully contributed $1,000 every month. For my medium-term investments, my goal was to invest $420 every month, which I put into Stash Away's general investing portfolio. I've had this portfolio since January 2021, where I've been slowly contributing $100 to $200, whatever was doable for me back then, because I knew there was something in the near future that I was saving up for, although I didn't have a clear picture of what it would be. But I knew it was important for me to put aside money for it, so I've just continued since then. I chose Stash Away for this portfolio because back then, it was the most accessible and approachable way for me to begin my investing journey. I really appreciated the app's user interface. I could create a portfolio and it would recommend a risk index for me based on my time horizon and risk appetite. So it made my first foray into investing far less intimidating and from there I slowly expanded my knowledge about investing. If you're looking to start your journey with investing, I would really recommend exploring the options on Stash Away. I think it's a great starting point if you're looking to dip your toes into investing. They also do a lot of work in financial education and they have a bunch of videos under Stash Away Academy explaining the basics of personal finance on their app. I think that's so amazing and it's such a great resource for people who are starting out. I have an affiliate link with Stash Away which you can use to sign up for an account and I'll link it in the description below. Stash Away also has a cash management portfolio called Simple Plus which I use to keep my money that I was putting aside for my holiday fund. My goal was to save $400 a month for a holiday, which totals up to 4.8k by the end of the year. And that's exactly what I did. I went to Korea back in October for two weeks and I spent a total of 3k on the whole trip, including flights, accommodation and food. If I include my personal shopping expenses, then it's about 3.5k, but I think that's still pretty reasonable for a two-week trip. Honestly, I think I could have done with a bit less shopping because it wasn't the most meaningful part of my trip, but overall, I had a really great time and I thought it was great value for money for how much I ended up spending. This year was really my first time traveling as a working adult and that is a very different experience than traveling as a student when you don't have much disposable income and a much tighter budget. 
So I'm 100% motivated to continue to make saving up for holidays a consistent part of my budget for as long as I'm able to make room for it with my income. It's something I value and so it makes sense to me that I prioritize it as one of my goals as well. Alright, my last two goals are less landslide victories and more like technical wins, but not emotional wins. The goal was to earn $500 a month from side hustles. Like I technically achieved it, but I don't think I got at the spirit of the goal, which was to consistently be earning every month through consistent effort on my part. And I was earning every month, whether from YouTube AdSense or freelance work, and some months are better than others of course, but I don't know, I just feel like I didn't focus on the right thing this year, and so the spirit of consistency was not there. I think I'll feel it more next year because a lot of my side income this year was riding on the wave of last year's efforts back in 2022. So I think because of my perceived lack of commitment to this goal, I will have to say that I only half achieved this goal. Finally, my last 2023 goal was to get a pay raise by the end of the year. This one was a bit of a throwaway goal that I included last year and I did say that I didn't have a concrete plan on how to achieve this back then. Spoiler alert, I never did come up with a plan. Very early in the year, I did increase my side hustle monthly budget contribution from $500 to $800, so I gave myself a pay raise essentially, and I got small increments from my day job that eventually increased my salary from $4,000 at the beginning of the year to $4,200 at the end of this year. As for next year, I'm starting a new job and my salary has also increased, so all in all, there have been raises and upward progress in terms of my income. But similar to the previous goal, I feel like I cannot fully own this win because I didn't work too hard on it. None of the increases were particularly dramatic, all were modest increases, for which I'm extremely grateful of course given the rising cost of living. But I think my mistake was not being more specific with this goal, and so even though I've achieved it, I don't really know for what I'm celebrating. So this goal, I would say, is only half achieved. Before I talk about my 2024 goals, I want to address some changes in my life circumstances that I think would be important for context. As your situation or lifestyle changes, I think it's important to reassess your goals and evaluate what is now realistic or feasible for you. Compared to 2021, I'm in a much different place now, not just financially but also emotionally and mentally, and that will affect my goals and priorities. The most financially significant thing that happened this year was my family receiving the last of my father's money, which allowed us to complete our emergency fund and also put aside money to pay off my remaining study loan. This by itself already gave me a huge sense of relief and security, Apart from my mortgage, my study loan was my biggest liability and my emergency fund was something that I had been aggressively building since I bought this house and cleared most of my savings. But equally as important, although far less dramatic, is just the fact of time passing and the everyday humdrum of making consistent efforts and exercising financial discipline. I've been working now for four years, earning a stable and consistent monthly income, and just that little progress every month resulted in a greater sense of stability that didn't exist four years ago. At the same time, my life circumstances have also stabilized, and that wasn't the case just three years ago when I had to buy this house. So with that sense of stability and security in most areas of my life, I've been able to gain confidence in my own ability to achieve my financial goals. I think that's the biggest takeaway from this. You have to get through the boredom of making consistent efforts every single day to see results after a few months or even years. Everyone wants to make more money tomorrow, but I think that's unrealistic. Time and consistent effort is underrated in personal finance. And also, I want to add, intentional reflection is also very important. If you keep doing the same thing without stopping to think if what you're doing aligns with your values and priorities, you will risk ending up where you don't want to be. Alright, that's the end of my lecture. Anyway, the last change I want to point out is that I'm starting a new job in 2024, which I'm really excited about. I did get a salary increase, however, at the same time, I am anticipating a proportionate or even greater increase in my living expenses. So in order to preserve my material lifestyle at my current level, I will have to make small sacrifices in my other savings goals, which will subsequently be reflected in my monthly budget. That leads us into my money goals for 2024. After evaluating my performance for my 2023 goals, I have decided to have two categories of goals this time. I'll split my goals into hard goals and soft goals. 
Hard goals are more concrete and numbers-driven sort of goals, while soft goals have more open-ended outcomes. Starting off with my hard goals. Firstly, I want to put aside $900 a month for long-term investments, so this would be primarily for retirement. If you remember, last year's goal was $1,000, so this is $100 less than last year. That's just how I've been able to fit it into my budget for 2024. With my changing lifestyle and living expenses, I've had to reduce it in order to make room for other items in my budget. I was a bit disappointed at first, but I told myself that this just means I'm taking care of myself in other ways. I'm prioritizing maintaining my current lifestyle and quality of life, and that is a choice I'm actively making. And the fact that I have $900 at all to put into my retirement is such a gift and a privilege, and I shouldn't forget that. Anyway, this is just the minimum amount and doesn't mean that I can't top up as and when I have extra cash on hand. Same goes with the next few goals I'll be talking about. As for what exactly I'll be investing in, I think I'll take it month by month for now until I figure out what my strategy will be, and that's related to one of the soft goals I'll be discussing later. For now, $900 a month for retirement investments is my goal. Next, I want to contribute $300 for medium-term investments. This is a continuation of last year's goal, but if you remember, my goal last year was $420 every month. So unfortunately, this goal also had to shrink for 2024, but $300 a month I think is still pretty generous and amounts to 36 k by the end of the year. I'll continue to put this in the same stash away general investing portfolio. Next, I want to save $300 a month in my family fund. This is a new goal that I started this year in 2023 after I completed my emergency fund. It was the leftover funds from my dad's money that hadn't been assigned to emergency fund or given to my mother and brother. I just pulled it together and called it my family fund and it's like a sinking fund for any family expenses we might have. It could be money for renovation for a future family home or even a holiday fund for us if we ever go on holiday together. So it's really for any expenses related to the family outside of daily living expenses. I think it's important that I continue to grow and replenish this fund, which is why I'm contributing $300 a month into it. I've also decided to put it into Stash Away Simple Plus because it has a higher projected interest rate and it's not a fund that I'll be regularly dipping into, so I can just let the money sit there and grow. Next, I want to continue putting aside $400 a month in my holiday fund. So this is one goal that remains unchanged from last year because it's something that I want to prioritize as part of my life. I really value travel as an experience and also as a way for me to treat and enjoy myself and so I'll put in the effort to make room for it in my budget. The only difference is that I'm going to put it in GXS Bank because it's faster to make withdrawals for when I need to pay for flights or bookings in advance since it's a regular bank account instead of a cash management account. With this budget, I'm aiming for at least two mid-range holidays next year within Asia and I'm really excited about that. My next three goals are what I consider soft goals, which means I don't have a specific number to hit like my hard goals, but I've thought about some possible ways to make them more concrete accomplishments, which I'll share in detail as I go through them. Firstly, I want to educate myself more on the concept of retirement. It's a word I've used a lot in my videos and also a word I'm sure a lot of you hear, not just in the personal finance space, but also in everyday life. I just think it's such a loaded term with a lot of assumptions and expectations that needs to be unpacked. I think we all understand the literal definition of retirement, which is broadly to permanently leave the workforce, usually after one reaches a certain age or amount of wealth, such that your savings are able to support you financially for the rest of your life. But in our world today, with all the anxieties over rising costs and an increased emphasis on finding one's meaning and purpose in life, I don't think it's as straightforward as before. And if I'm going to be saving so much money for this idea, this concept, I want to be clear on what it is I'm saving for. It's not just about understanding CPF or long-term investing anymore. This topic extends well beyond the world of finance and into ideas of personal fulfillment, community, and aging, and that's also what I'm interested in. To make this goal a bit more concrete, I'm thinking I could possibly make a video or a blog post on Substack to share what I've learned and explain these concepts once I've understood them well enough myself. I don't want to make any promises, but that could be something I'll work on if I feel that I have something worth sharing from my perspective. Secondly, and also related to the first soft goal, is to educate myself more on investing. I want to learn the technicalities, the strategies, the pros and cons of various asset classes. I also want to know the slang that they use or the specific jargon that's always thrown around. 
for how much I talk about investing on this channel and to my friends, I still don't feel like I fully understand it, especially when I talk to people who really know what they're talking about. I mean, I know enough to be reasonably confident that I can use certain tools and I know how to allocate my money in a certain way, and that's also thanks to the books I've read and videos I've watched that have taught me these crucial basics, so it's a matter of improving upon those basics and deepening my knowledge on the topic. Honestly, there's also a personal roadblock, which is that, frankly, I'm just not very interested in the topic. Every time I've tried to read up on it, I've always found it too difficult and complex and so boring. I think on a fundamental level, there's always been a disconnect between my values and the idea of investing, at least in this narrow financial definition. Among all the topics within personal finance, the reason I like talking about budgeting the most is because I personally find it very interesting. How you spend your money says a lot about you as a person. It shows your values and your priorities, the way you think and problem solve. So I enjoy doing it as a sort of mental exercise and when I help my friends do their budget, it helps to clarify who they are and what they want in life. It's a very practical skill that has wide-ranging impacts beyond your financial life. Investing, on the other hand, seems a lot more opaque and unwieldy and I can't really wrap my head around it. It doesn't help that there's also a lot of misinformation and misunderstanding about what investing is about and what it can do. But, you know, I've worked with many difficult ideas and concepts throughout my life, and I think if I put in more effort to understand it, I can grow to appreciate it, even if I can't 100% align with it. Maybe even 70% is good enough. As for my milestone with this goal, I'll aim to come up with a sound investing strategy that is well-researched and also comfortable for me, and something that I'm able to defend as being well thought out if I had to explain it. It seems simple enough, but truthfully, I'm very intimidated, and I think this will be the most challenging goal for me. Finally, my last soft goal is to go on an online shopping ban. This sounds a bit extreme and unrealistic, but of course I have caveats and exceptions to this rule. But basically for the entire year of 2024, I want to really question myself before I choose to buy anything online through my phone or my laptop. This restriction only applies to online shopping. I have no restriction on spending in person in a physical store. I think the accessibility of purchasing anything online makes it too easy to be impulsive and unintentional with my spending, which is the main reason why I am setting this as a goal for myself for next year. I'll be checking in on this goal every month in my Substack and reporting on if I purchased anything online and the reasons why I did it. I post at the end of every month anyway to summarize my spending and share my budget for the next month, so I'll just add this section in the blog post as well. If you're interested in following my journey on this, you can subscribe to my Substack or follow my Telegram channel. I don't want to go into too much detail in this video because it's a lot to talk about, so I'll either do a blog post or a video in the future explaining my rules and reasoning and all that. With that, those are all my goals for 2024. In the last section of this video, I just want to share my money philosophy that will shape my attitude towards money and spending next year, and that is to be okay with not having. Last year, the second money philosophy that I shared was to leave room to enjoy and spend, and this was coming from a time of great restriction and limited resources. I had been aggressively saving for a lot of fundamental financial goals, and I was also finishing up my low buy year in 2022. So I had written this with the intention of giving myself more grace to treat myself more in the new year, and to see how I can spend money in a way that would increase my quality of life and happiness. And I really appreciated that I allowed myself to do that, and that's how I'm able to come to this conclusion today. I may have took the latter part of that statement too literally, such that my interpretation of it was to leave room to enjoy life by spending. And after a year of living in this way, I've come to the realization that I've been mindlessly buying things just because I had the resources to do it. I also believe that the technology around us encourages this behavior. It's so easy to be advertised to, to be influenced to buy this or that thing, to always have something newer and shinier and better. In 2024, I want to disconnect myself from that constant accessibility to consumption. And not just be okay with not having, but not knowing as well. I don't need to know what is trending, or new, or hot right this moment. I'll just go to the mall and see. I'm okay with that, because what I will get back is my time, my focus, and my money. And those are all worth more to me than the mere convenience of online shopping. 
Activities like mindlessly window shopping or passively consuming entertainment did not add to my life at all, but only made me feel constantly inadequate, like I had to keep searching for something newer and better that's out there, as though the acquisition of that thing would finally make my life feel complete. And it's not like I'm still broke, and I'm not financially struggling. My shopping has never entered the territory of dangerous overspending at all, but it's a mental thing for me. There's something inside my head that I want to protect from this constant assault of consumerism. The fact is, I live in a beautiful home that I can comfortably afford. I am able to support my family. I'm able to live a good life. I should be wanting for nothing. This feeling of inadequacy for material items is manufactured by advertising and I don't want to participate anymore. So I'm choosing to opt out where I can, to limit where I can, so that I can live my life closer to my values and intentions. And that will be my North Star, my guiding principle for how I'm approaching my money-related decisions going forward. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm grateful that you've watched this all the way to the end. I know I ramble a lot and this might not be the type of personal finance video you're looking for, but I hope the goals I've shared will be of some inspiration to you on your own financial journey. Please share this video with a friend if you think it would help them, and in turn that helps me so much as well. The links to my Substack, my Telegram channel, my Patreon, and other videos are all linked in the description box below if you're interested. My next video will be a breakdown of my planned monthly budget for 2024, and I'll show how I've incorporated some of my goals into the budget. That's always a very popular video with people, and a video I love to make. So stay tuned, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next one.